Hey, welcome back to the videos. Uh, we're still in our series that I'm calling Revisiting the Classics. And the old classic tune that I've chosen for this video is Reuben. And it's just about always played in D tuning. So, uh, again, I'm assuming that you know Reuben and that you're familiar with playing in D tuning. So, if that's the case, we'll just trudge right into the video. I'm going to play what I consider a standard version. Most uh, people associate Reuben with Scrooge style versions and so for the purposes of this video I'm going to stick within the confines of Scrooge and just add a few new ideas, a few wrinkles, uh, some ideas from me and maybe some ideas from really well-known players like Sonny Osmond that we can mix in and we'll save the up the neck break for later so there's an A and a B part down low and, a, and then an improvised break that covers the A and B parts up the neck, but I'll save that for later. So let's just jump into the low position break for Reuben. And again, this is a pretty standard tune, all standard strokes rolls. It's not a very hard tune to play once you understand detuning, which is not that complicated. So I'm just going to play a, a standard, what I'll call a generic strokes version, and we'll break it down and see what we can do to spice it up. <laughs> song is so short as far as your solo goes you'll usually go back and play all that again so you'll get two rounds of this uh, say in a jam session or even in a band situation now one thing I like to do in the confines of Scruggs for Reuben Reuben actually goes back to more of a blues kind of sound old time bands play Reuben they call it Reuben's Train usually and the bluegrass bands picked up on that and the old time versions tend to be a little more modal a little more blues influenced the Scruggs versions tend to kind of waffle a little more toward the happy majory sounding stuff. So what I want to do is kind of push into a little more like the old time tonality, if you like to think that way. Try to get some of that little, I uh, guess, more of a haunting feel that you would get with an old time claw hammer version. And it's really not that hard to do. I'm going back to zoom in on the fingerboard. Uh, the typical position that you're going to use in Scruggs style is push-offs and slides, and again, this is just standard Scruggs, alternating thumb rolls. If you can play Cripple Creek in G, then you can play Reuben, because they're not that far apart as far as what your right hand's doing. But the, the thing is, you're always coming off this, which has a little bit of blue sound in it, but it's not very... Uh, it's not out there, let's say that way. And you're coming back to this F note on the four string, which again adds a little blues. So Earl's version does have you come from here, which is G sharp. We're tuned to D now. So your third string is now tuned to F sharp. This would be G. This would be G sharp. This would be an A note. Your second string is tuned to A if you're in tune, which I'm not exactly. These are new strings, so they're still stretching. So we're working from a G sharp to an A, and when you inflect that G sharp over an A, you get kind of that chromatic sound that we recognize from melodic style. I want to stay rooted in strokes here, but I want to ramp this up, take it up another notch. And one thing I like to do is put a little more blues in room and then the standard model would have you do. So instead of coming off of this over to that F note, what if we held this G note and then come off of this G sharp note? Then it inflects just a little more of that blues sound that I'm looking for. And then the F note is useful for a little more of that old time modal sound that I'm looking for too so I can get more of that haunting dark blues uh, modal sound that I'm looking for so what I'm going to have to do is figure out a fingering I use the index finger here for this G note 
Then I'm going to use the ring for the four string, and sometimes I'll use the ring or the middle for that pull off or that hammer. And then the second string will be played open to give me a little kind of a drone effect. And then I'll I'll still try to keep this note, which is the A note on the third fret. So here will be, here will be my new version of that first half or the A part of Reuben. And I can even still keep the alternating thumb idea. Three, two, five, one, three, two, four, one, three. So I'll just try to concentrate on making this more bluesy so I don't really have to change the right hand, but you can experiment with different roll patterns that you like. But the main thing here is I'm trying to get you to put more blues into this part of Reuben. And at that point, I'm actually hammering from that G to the A, skipping directly over the G sharp. seems pretty simple but because it's uh, chromatic in nature I can actually do some pretty cool little runs that are kind of like strode single string kind of like Pike County breakdown but not <laughs> you know Earl was a great single string player but he didn't take it to the extreme say as Don Reno would but we can actually make some pretty cool sounding blues chromatic uh, licks <laughs> Working across D open, the F note on four, open third, but this case not open anymore because I'm fretting this G note back here. And then dropping in this note, the G sharp, at the second fret of the third. And then the second string open is my A note. So I go D, F, G, uh, sharp, A. You play around with those notes in different ways. It's almost endless what you can do blues wise with that position. slight position changes from what you're already doing and you'll find just uh, golly a just multitude of really cool sounding blues chromatic or a mixture of bl cr blues chromatic a little bit of that old time hammer, mountain modal kind of sound sitting right there within a couple of frets of what you're already doing now what about the uh, B part the B part of Reuben is actually just an extension of the A part but it gets, this is where Earl would actually try to get a little bluesier. And this would approximate the sound of a D7 chord. And it's almost, again, goes back to that kind of a modal open-ended sound that's kind of hung between a blues seventh chord sound and maybe even a minor sound. So it's kind of like D minor and D blues kind of wrapped together. Now the, t the typical version like I played at the beginning of the video was just rolling like a forward roll over that position. I went in the syncopation kind of do this cool thing. One thing that Sonny Osborne did, which I picked up on immediately, probably back in the late 70s when I first heard him do this, I adopted that into my playing. His idea was to actually move around a little more and not stay rooted exactly in that position as a roll pattern. So here's what Sonny's version did. So what he's doing is working out 
out of this position, third fret on the middle two strings, but he's sliding and, ch uh, and pinching, I'm sorry, sliding and pinching up from three to five on the second string. And then he returns to the position without having to hold the whole shape, or the whole partial, I should say. And there's a certain syncopation to the pattern. Da, 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 roll. Da, 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 roll. And he's inflecting off of the third string with a push off to that F note on the four, so it keeps a little bit of that. to take ideas from G tuning because G tuning and D tuning, G and D are very similar in the way things can be constructed on the fingerboard even though the tuning is different, we're tuned to a D chord instead of a G chord. Uh, you can actually move everything you play from uh, G tuning up one string and it works in D tuning. And, uh, I've talked about this in the Lick of the Week videos from uh, a couple years back so you might want to check that out. But this is something I picked up from uh, Bela Fleck years and years ago. Uh, he was explaining how you can move melodies from G over to D. And I adopted that idea and I started taking songs like Reuben that I always played just atypical stroke style the way Earl would or other stroke style players. And I started mixing in ideas from other songs. So I'll take the idea from old Joe Clark that you normally play on the first and second string right here. <laughs> which you could still do here, but it would sound a little funky, but if you move it over to the third string, let the second string be open, you can play a 3-1-5 forward roll, and then start dropping in the second string at 2, and the second string at 3, and releasing those notes, and you can basically convert the old Joe Clark stuff you do from G tuning over to D tuning. Pull-offs, hammers, you can do all kinds of things with that position. So I'm going to mix that into the B part of Ruben. Here we go. Hopefully we'll spice up your versions of Reuben. They're, it's fun to do and it's not very hard. Uh, Detuning is not a very hard tuning, especially on a song like Reuben. Reuben's uh, structure-wise is a pretty simple song. So I hope these ideas will give you something to work on. Hope you enjoyed watching the video. And then the next time we'll, we'll go up the neck and explore Earl's Up the Neck Break, take it apart, and try some different things, maybe even add some melodic style and D, I don't know, but we'll wait and see when we get there, so I appreciate you watching.